Hello everyone, Shadefire here. Have you ever felt like there's just something missing inside you? Like maybe you're just empty? So this is You Are Empty. Uh, I did do a first impressions of sorts on this previously. This is a not particularly good, but distinctly bizarre Russian FPS from 2006-2007. It, uh, it doesn't look good, it doesn't play good, it doesn't completely sound good, but it's got just a certain weirdness that makes me want to give this LP a shot. I say give it a shot because this game also has quite a bit of technical issues, especially on modern systems. So I don't know if this will work all the way through. Um, it's got this horrible stuttering problem. It's not the frame rate stutters, it's like the game stutters when you move. If you stand still, everything's totally fine. You can look around, but as soon as you start walking, there's like this janky kind of delay to your walking so it like I don't know anyway that's not nearly as apparent when recording so I might actually be able to play it but uh, running it at like 200 FPS or whatever it runs at normally is not very helpful anyhow let's uh, give this a shot this game has some actually really nice animated you know drawn cutscenes that probably don't have that much to do with the game and I know that they were outsourced to a animation studio so it's not like they're in-house or anything so we'll start off with that uh, I guess we'll play on normal because this is a Russian game so hard is probably actually pretty hard And thus our story begins. So, from what I recall, we're some sort of Russian officer or KGB or what have you that was running security or something at a secret facility, you know, some sort of government lab, and then we got hit by a car and got put in the hospital, which is where we are now. You can see our health at the bottom is only at 60, so we haven't fully recovered from being hit by a car. Alright, I'm going to take a step forward and I'm going to see how bad this stutters. Alright, there's a little bit of glide when I let go, but otherwise this seems way more playable with the recording running. What's going on out there? Alright. You can see that they're, uh, they definitely prioritize outpatients in this hospital. So, we're in alternate history here. Uh, I believe this is supposed to be the 1950s, 1960s. 
where Russia continued to focus on, you know, mind control experiments and all that, which uh, I have a feeling is going to play into the story here. Also, this clock is not moving, and there's no second hand making that ticking sound. But yeah, so you can tell this game is not very pretty. Uh, it kind of uniquely does not have dynamic shadows, which were kind of, you know, pretty standard by 2007. So everything is this flat sort of texture. There really is no shadows at all. We don't even have, like, a static circle shadow for our character. But, uh, you know, the setting is already kind of nice. This Soviet architecture style that I always appreciate. Probably because of Stalker. We've got these medicine jars or whatever lying around that give us health. Alright. Not going that way. And we're not going down, so up we go. Hopefully whoever's having a good time in there is going to leave us alone. I'm trying to remember how far into this I played in the first impressions. Uh, I think we got out into the city and... We definitely saw a couple different enemy types. I don't have a weapon right now. How did that happen? <laughs> did he just like launch himself at full speed? Alright, so we got a fella here in a straight jacket with a leg that is shorn right down to the bone and then a metal piece holding it together. And he's got a pointy stick. Well, luckily, I am an expert in defense against fruit and point ed sticks. Oh, there's no health in there. So clearly there's going to be another one of these guys. So I guess we're going to need to find a weapon? I don't actually remember. It's been a while even since I did that video. If we get a weapon here. I believe we get some variety of melee weapon. Cause that guy's not going to get out of the way. Well, I mean, it sounds like somebody's having a good time in this hospital. I wonder if this guy's scripted not to chase us. Can I crouch? Let's get a good look at him. He's probably uh, not going to chase us until we get a weapon. Alright, I guess we max out our health at 99, just to be different. Oh, there we go. Good old wrench. Does it say something on the side, or is that like... That's oh, probably just a you know, make and model number. Alright, so now... We, oh, jeez, I forgot about the booby nurses. The really tall, jiggly nurses with the skull faces. Skull face! Also, she just sort of materialized, unless one of these doors open. Nope, she just came out of nowhere. And we can't go that way, so let's bludgeon this fellow. Alright, so we just have one attack, which is almost kind of Half-Life 1 speed. I mean, it doesn't go crazy when you hit a surface, but just the default swing speed is about Half-Life 1 crowbar speed. Alright, these guys don't hit too hard. I imagine if we didn't beat him down, though, he would have hit us repeatedly, very quickly. That is usually how these things go. Can I sprint? Of course not. Wow. Two smacks to the chest, took him down. So these guys aren't too tough. Okay, that's my footsteps. I thought someone was behind me. Oh, we got a note here. The keys for the door are downstairs. Ask the janitor. Masha and Velen. Oh, we could find that corpse of that guy that got pushed out the window. He had a gun. Another booby nurse. Oh. <laughs> Threw a syringe at me. Where is she getting them from? I don't think I want to know. Lady, you gotta stop that. Is 
she has seen some things in these days. Is there like... It kind of looks like the neck is not attached to the chest. Oh, I guess it's because of the blood splatter on the tits. <laughs> Someone just fucking threw a bottle at the door. Oh, I do remember these. These are those weird Soviet water machines that give you health. But I guess I don't need health, so it won't give me any. Yeah, so I guess, uh, I don't know if they still have those now, but at least at some point in Soviet Russia, the Soviet Union, there were these, like, water vending machines, and you'd, you'd bring your own cup, and you put in, like, you know, whatever the Russian equivalent of, like, 10 cents would be. I know it wouldn't be 10 rubles, obviously. Or maybe it would. Rubles are, you know, pretty low value individually. But anyway, you put your cup in, and you could either get regular water... Or you could pay a little extra and get soda water. Okay, so we got the key from the janitor. Is there another one of these guys? <laughs> Even with a melee weapon, they're not much of a threat. I mean, they are guys in straight jackets that are awkwardly gripping a stick. I imagine they're uh, having a bad time trying to attack. I should probably quick save at some point. I don't think this game has checkpoints of any sort. F6, F5, F... oh no, F5 I think. That's good. Oh, I was like, is there a door I passed? But no, that was outside. I have no idea how long this game is either. What is that sound? There we go. Good old broom handle. Oh, might as well let people have their nurse upskirt. Yeah, look at those hairy thighs. They're probably not hairy, they're probably just dirty. Alright, so we've got our broom handle here. I guess this is probably a C96, not an original Mauser. But uh, there was a period of time where this gun was actually pretty popular in Russia, despite, you know, the whole... Russia and Germany being enemies not that long before. I believe it was even a time when it was called the People's Handgun. And it was used by the officers of the... I think it was called the White Army? There was a bit of a minor civil uprising type thing. I admit that's one period of Russian history I don't know that much about. <laughs> Alright. Some monster infighting there over a pair of keys. A set of keys, and a pair. I don't know why there would be only two keys. Oh yeah, I forgot about these uh, minor fellows. It's okay, he was only a minor inconvenience. I probably should be conserving ammo, since this is the type of game likely not to give me a lot of ammo. But... Eh, we'll do that later. Let's not make the game tedious right from the get-go. Alright. This looks like a monster closet. There is a particular enemy that I've seen a screenshot of that I'm looking forward to seeing. But, again, I have no idea when that will show up. Hello, nurse. By nurse. Oh, I guess she got her revenge. Yeah. 
I bet he came out of the monster closet. I like, too, that they don't even try to stab you with those sticks. They just sort of swipe them at you, as though that will do something. Right, we had to incinerate this guy because I guess he ate the keys. I think that fall would be fatal. It might hurt a little bit. And since he doesn't even have a proper leg, his little brace thing would probably just shatter. But probably not fatal. Hmm. Ammo? <laughs> No fire here. If I use the uh, iron sight, it's a little more effective. And he is a pissed off firefighter. Can't take his axe though. You think that might be a better weapon than our pipe wrench? Some more health and ammo. Some weird positional audio on my footsteps. I, I guess we're still in the, the first level. We haven't hit a loading screen yet, which I assume is how they divide the levels up. Dag. And right as I said that, I hit a loading screen. Alright. So, uh, I guess we'll stop here for the first part? Again, I don't want to drag these out too long, because I assume some of these later levels are going to get pretty tedious. So, I guess we'll split it up by loading sections. I've been Shadefire, and this is the first episode of You Are Empty. And I hope you'll come uh, empty out your core with me again next time. And we shoot some dogs, I guess. Alright, folks. Take care.